Please stand with me for the reading of God's holy word. Our scripture today can be found in John 2, verses 1 through 12, if you'll read along with me. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water, that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. The steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, always keep him on your mind, always remember Jesus, precious Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. His name is wonderful, beautiful, beautiful. Always keep him on your mind. I will never forget that day. I was there when Jesus performed his first miracle. I was a wee bit of a lad then, but I have been reflecting on that day for decades. Oh, by the way, my name is Jed. My real name is Jedediah, but you can call me Jed for short. But I was one of the servants on that day when Jesus came to a small town called Cana of Galilee. It was some eight miles from Nazareth, and as you would say, as the crow flies, it took a day's journey to get there. But I will never forget the day when my Lord and Savior showed up at a wedding in a small town called Cana. Why would Jesus show up at a wedding? 
I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> because as I reflect on it and as I think about it, Jesus' steps were ordered by his Father. So it was no coincidence that he and his disciples were invited to this wonderful wedding of a young couple. For you see, Jesus showed up on the third day of the wedding. And in ancient Judaism, in those times, weddings lasted for several days. So you had to make sure you had enough food, you had to make sure you had enough wine, because if you ran out of any food or any wine, it would be a disgrace to the family. Well, anyway, Jesus shows up at this wedding. And Auntie Mary was there. And the disciples were there. And I could see John still standing at the door as some of the guests were coming in on the third day. Mary was busy walking around making sure all the guests were being served. And there was a lot of buzz, there was a lot of, a lot of fellowship, a lot of partying, and people just enjoying one another's company. Jesus came as a guest, but by the end of the day, he would be the host. As a matter of fact, by the midday of the wedding, Jesus' mother came to him. I can see it as if it was day, as yesterday. Mary came to Jesus and said, we have no wine. And you know, Mary was the kind of woman or the kind of mother that you just couldn't say no to. You know, she would give you that, that look that only a mother could give. Auntie Mary was the kind of person that you just could not say no to. And so Jesus looked at his mother and he said, woman, what has this to do with me and you? Why are you bothering me about wedding at wine at a wedding? And he says something to her that has puzzled me for years. He said, my hour has not yet come. And as I look back, I imagine that he was talking about the day that he would die on the cross. But as I think about that day and Mary tells Jesus that we have no more wine, Mary looked very worried, very concerned because she was related to the family. And me being a servant, I just did what, whatever was told of me to do. So she comes to me, she comes to me. And she says, whatever he says, do it, do it. He tells me and the rest of the servants to fill the six pots with water, to fill them with water. Now, in my mind, I wasn't about to go back to that wedding party serving water. I was going to hightail it out of there if Jesus was asking me to fill up these water pots and serve water. Oh, but that's not what happened. Jesus looked into the water pot. For what, what all I could see, there was just water in there, but 
as he looked in there, something strange began to happen. Something mysterious. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I, I never would have believed it. But the water turned into wine. As a matter of fact, in those days, they always serve the best wine first and the cheap wine last. And as Jesus turns this water into wine and he tells us as servants, because as servants, I, I got a chance to see the miracle that had happened. And it's only when you serve that you actually begin to see what God is able to do. You see, Jesus became the food and beverage manager that day. Jesus turned water into wine. And I began to think about that at, on a deeper level. I began to ask myself the question, if Jesus can turn water into wine, and wine represents joy, celebration, peace, happiness. Wine symbolizes all that is good. And if Jesus can turn that which is mundane into something special, then he can make a difference in my life. So what do you do when the wine runs out in life? Not just physically, but what do you do when there's no more joy in your life? What do you do when there's no more joy in your marriage? What do you do when, when life has sapped all of the energy out of you? What do you do when the wine runs out? In my life at that time, the wine had run out I didn't know what would come the next day. I had no idea I was at my wit's end and all of a sudden, I meet this man named Jesus. You know, my life has changed because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. What do you do when the wine runs out? When you feel like giving up on life? When you feel like throwing in the towel? When you feel like giving up on marriage? When you feel like giving up on a relationship? When your children don't listen to you anymore, they were so precious when they were growing up, but all of a sudden, the wine has run out. When there's no joy in your job, you're just going through the motions and you're just going to your, your workplace, but there's no joy. What do you do when the wine runs out? when your body is racked with pain and you just feel like giving up and say, Lord, take me home right now, what do you do when the wine runs out? Well, I was right there on that day when Jesus came into my space, my world as a servant and when his mother, Auntie Mary, says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Now, when she said that, I was just thinking in the physical, but then I began to reflect on it. And whatever Jesus tells you to do, 
do it. Whatever he tells you to do. Because Jesus is the divine winemaker. You see, Jesus didn't have to go get some grapes out of the vineyard. He didn't have to crush any grapes and allow them to ferment. He just looked into the stone jars and turned water into wine. That's what Jesus is able to do in our lives. Perhaps you've been trying to turn water into wine in your own strength. You've been trying to make things better in your own strength, in your own ingenuity. But I encourage you today to go to the divine winemaker. You see, Mary served as a symbol of faithfulness. And she had learned to rely on the resourcefulness of Jesus Christ. Perhaps Mary had seen Jesus work miracles before at the house. Maybe, if you just allow me to use my sanctified imagination, maybe Mary had run out of a few eggs. And all Jesus had to do is just look at the hen. (laughs) And all of a sudden, Mary had eggs in abundance. And maybe Jesus is just waiting on you, waiting on me to just be obedient and trust him. I heard Jesus say one day that I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Jesus wants us to live life to the full. He wants us to have an abundant life. What are you doing living a mediocre life? Jesus wants us to move from being good to great. He wants us to trust him at his word. And I discovered that when you're obedient and you begin to serve, serve, serving puts you in proximity of a miracle. You see, when we serve, we forget about ourselves and we focus on someone else. Perhaps when the wine runs out, it's because we're too focused on ourselves. We need to be focused on someone else because Jesus blesses those who serve. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. He said, I came to serve to save those who are lost. And we are never more like Jesus than when we serve. Obviously, Jesus was a consummate party animal. (laughs) That if Jesus could make time to show up at a wedding in Cana, my town, And that which was lacking, he actually provided abundance. Christian and Jewish history tells us that when the Messiah comes, that he would come and he would provide abundance for his people. In ancient Jewish writings, there were Jewish teachers who said that when the Messiah comes, he would take a cluster of grapes, and in that cluster of grapes, in every grape, he would provide more than enough wine just from that one grape. 
Well, I saw with my own eyes that day that the Messiah, where there was a mess at the wedding, the Messiah came and cleaned up the mess. And you may be in a mess today. You may be in a mess and you try to everything in your life to get out of that mess. But I want to encourage you today to trust the Messiah because he he came to clean up your mess. You know, I had to get me a taste of that wine that day, especially after the master of the wedding received the wine and he tasted the wine and he said, wow! He says to the bridegroom that usually custom says you serve the best wine first and after the people are drunk, then you serve the cheap wine but you have saved the best for last. So I had to get me some of that wine. I've been holding on to it for decades. (laughs) And I only drink a little bit of it for special occasions. Oh, but the wine that Jesus makes is good. It's better than good. It's the best. Jesus can turn water into wine. He can turn your life around. He can take that which is mundane and he can change it to something all together beautiful. Won't you let Jesus not only be the guest of your life, but let him be the Lord of your life. Let him be the host of your life. Because when Jesus begins to host the wedding, when he begins to host your career, when he begins to host your relationships, then things will turn around. But as long as you're serving as the host, You're just going to keep having a mess. But if you let Jesus be the host, (laughs) trust me, he will turn your life, he'll turn it around. He did it for me. And he'll do it for you. Always remember Jesus, precious Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Always remember Jesus, precious Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. His name is beautiful. Beautiful, so beautiful, always keep him on your mind.